In this video, we're going to solve the cubic equation x cubed plus x minus 1 equals 0 for complex x. So our first part is to do for real x, so solve for real x. So we're going to substitute x being y plus z, you'll see y later. So x cubed will be the quantity y plus z cubed, which is y cubed plus 3y squared z plus 3yz squared plus z cubed. And that's from the binomial theorem. We're going to write this as y cubed plus z cubed. And these two terms we can factor out a 3yz. That'll leave us with y plus z in the parentheses. So this can be written as y cubed plus z cubed. y plus z is x, so that would be 3 times x times yz. That's equal to x cubed. So now we can substitute this back into the original equation. And that'll leave us with y cubed plus z cubed plus 3xyz plus x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to move the minus 1 to the other side, so this will be equal to 1. The left-hand side will be equal to 1. And this is from x cubed. So now we're going to combine the x's together, so we get y cubed plus z cubed. When we factor out the x, we get 3yz plus 1 times x equals 1. So if this whole thing with the x is equal to 0, then you get a equation with y and z, and on the inside you get an equation with y and z. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to let y cubed plus z cubed equals 1, but that means that this is equal to 0, so we have 3yz plus 1 equals 0. From here you can solve for yz, so yz will be subtract 1, divide by 3, so we get that. Now we're going to cube both sides. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 3 cubed is 27. So we have y cubed, z cubed, equals minus 1 over 27. We have that y cubed plus z cubed equals 1 from, from above. So now let's solve for z cubed. You can do the same thing for y cubed, but we're just going to do z cubed, so that would be 1 minus y cubed, and now plugging this in for z cubed into this equation, you get y cubed times 1 minus y cubed equals minus 1 over 27. So now let's move all of this to, to the right hand side, so we're going to get y cubed will be negative y cubed. You have negative y cubed squared, so that would be plus y cubed quantity squared. And then you have minus 1 over 27 is equal to 0. So now this is a fairly easy quadratic. So you just say y cubed equals negative b. So it's negative 1 times negative 1. So that's 1 plus or minus the square root. b squared is 1 minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 1 over 27. So all in all, you have 1 plus 4 over 27 which is 27 plus 4 over 27, which is 31 over 27. 2 times a, but a is 1. This is equal to y cubed. You can take the cube root on both sides. That'd be y. But because we could do the same thing for z, and you don't know which one's plus or minus, because the 1 plus or minus, you just say y and z could be this, where y is the plus and z is the minus, or the other way around. You know that x is y plus z, so this would be the cube root of 1 plus the square root of 31 over 27 over 2. And then we have plus the cube root of 1 minus the square root of 31 over 27 over 2. So that will be the real solution. So this is real. So now let's look at the complex solution. So we're going to say x is equal to a plus b times i. So x cubed will be a cubed plus 3a squared times bi plus you have 3 times a times bi quantity squared plus bi quantity cubed. So this would be a cubed plus 3a squared bi bi squared is 
a negative i squared is negative one so this will be negative three a b squared so the i disappears and finally i cubed is negative i so we have minus b cubed i so now the original equation is x cubed x cubed plus x minus one equals zero so you can substitute this x into x cubed into here and x into here so we're going to get a the the um the real parts are going to be a cubed, then minus 3ab squared, and then we're going to have plus x, which is a plus a, and then minus 1 is all real. So now let's look at the imaginary parts. So now we have 3a squared b minus b cubed, and finally we have bi from the x, so this will just be b, all multiplied by i. And you can factor this out to factor the b out. So we're going to have plus, I'm not going to write this part down, but so b times 3a squared minus b squared plus 1 times i. And you want this equal to 0 because we have x cubed plus x minus 1 equals 0. So we have this part equals 0, and we have this part equals 0. And the i is obviously not 0 because i isn't not a number, but square root of negative one. So that means either b equals zero or this part equals zero. So that'd be three a squared minus b squared plus one equals zero. Solve for b squared, so b squared will be three a squared plus one. And the b equals zero part is just x equals a, or that means it's real. So we already have this, so we don't need to f figure it out again. So now we're going to look at this when that is equal to 0. So we have a cubed minus 3 ab squared plus a minus 1 equals 0. Yep. And now we have that b squared is 3a squared plus 1. So this looks kind of impossible without the b squared term, but now you can just substitute that in. So now substituting that in the b squared term, we have a cubed minus 3a times b squared, which is 3a squared plus 1 plus a minus 1 equals 0. So now we have a cubed minus 3a times 3a squared is 9a squared cubed. Yeah, a, a times a squared is a cubed, so minus 3a and then we have plus a minus 1 equals 0. And then minus 3a and plus a is minus 2a. And a cubed minus 9a cubed is minus 8a cubed minus 2a minus 1 equals 0. So now we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So the leading coefficient is not negative, so we have 8 a cubed plus 2a plus 1 equals 0. So we are going to continue. So in the beginning, we let x equal a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. That's really important. b squared is 3a squared plus 1, as we got before, and we want to solve 8a cubed plus 2a plus 1 equals 0 for real a. And once we get the a, we can get the b values by plugging into this equation. We take the plus or minus square root of both sides. So let's solve this equation. So we're going to do a similar substitution that we did in the beginning. So a equals m plus n. That'll make a cubed be m cubed plus n cubed plus 3 times a times n, m times n. And I skipped some steps, but that's what we did in the beginning. So now let's plug this into that equation. So we get 8 times a cubed, which is m cubed plus 8 n cubed plus 8 times 3 is 24, a, a m, n plus 2, a plus 1 equals 0. So now we get 8, m cubed plus 8, n cubed plus, we're going to factor out 2, a, similar, really similar to what we did before, so that would be 2, that would be 12, a is gone, so that would be 12, m, n plus 1 times a. And we're going to move the 1 to the other side, so that would be equal to negative 1. So now we're going to have two systems of equations with m, 
or one system of equation with m and n. So we have 12 m n plus 1 equals 0, and we have 8 m cubed plus 8 n cubed equals negative 1 because we just set this equal to 0. Okay, so when we solve this, we're gonna have to move. We're gonna have to solve for m n, so that'd be m n equals negative 1 over 12. m n cubed will be this value cubed, which will be negative 1 over 12 cubed, which is a really big number. And then this will be m cubed times n cubed. You solve for m cubed and n cubed. Then you solve for m when you take the cube root of it, and then you add those together. That's a lot of calculations, so I'm just gonna skip forward. So a is alpha is equal to m plus n, which is approximately negative 0 0.34116, and b is plus or minus the square root of 3a squared plus 1, and I did that calculation, that is plus or minus 1.16154, and we know that x is a plus b, so x will be negative 0 0.34116 plus 1.16154, and we have that x is the same real value, and then minus 1.16154, and this is x approximately equals, because this has a lot of digits, and so that's the complex solutions, the strictly real solutions, so like not imaginary part, will be this, and that is the end of the video. Hope you liked it.